Romantic comedies are nothing new nor special in the world of anime. It's a genre that I don't generally seek out anymore, mainly because there used to be this period in my life where it seemed like that's all I watched. And when your bases for a genre are things like Kare Kano and Oron and School Rumble, you need to give me something that I can get invested in, because otherwise, whatever you're gonna throw at me, I've seen it before. Now, whether this special something be like a supernatural element, a la Mysterious Girlfriend X, or just a damn strong cast of characters like in Princess Jellyfish, it just has to be there to be worth it. And so, ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, a 2014 anime about a young girl and her one-sided romance with a manga artist. I give you monthly girls, Nozaki-kun. Let's jam. Okay, so what do we got? Young girl named Sakura with weird yet easily identifiable hairstyle. Check. She's in love with a tall, dark, mysterious boy named Nozaki. Check. She attempts to ask him out but fails horribly. Check. He mistakes her love for fangirling because unbeknownst to the majority of his classmates, he is a decently successful manga author. Okay, I'll admit, that's a new one. What follows is the trials and tribulations of a young girl who would really like to ask out her crush, but is perfectly content to be able to spend time with him, leading her to become his assistant. Well, one of them anyways. The unique twist of the show is how it attempts to fill in the show's romantic plotline with information about the creation of manga or at least parts of it. There are many a factor I feel get exaggerated for the sake of both plot and time, Nozaki being able to do a full page drawing in a matter of seconds to prove a point as an example. The problem I have with the manga portion of the show is just how much I feel like they're only scratching the surface, which is something I'm probably going to say quite a few times. Now, I will admit that I know nothing about the actual creation of manga personally, and that my thoughts on this is probably clouded by a show that I watched last season called Shirobako, which is somewhat similar to Nozaki-kun because it deals with production, except in that case it is production of an anime, not a manga. But a bigger difference between the two to me is how Shirobako is just better at telling the story of how anime is produced. Nozaki-kun is less so, spending a lot more time on the actual rom-com that the story was written for. However much you enjoy this rom-com depends entirely on what you're looking for. If you're looking for more romance and less comedy, there are other places that you could be looking. And, of course, however much entertainment you get out of the comedy is solely dependent on your sense of humor. I will say that the comedy in this series is not bad. It had me laughing quite a few times. Nothing like loud, oh my god, rolling on the floor with laughter. More like when a friend sends you a funny text and you respond with LOL but don't actually laugh out loud. What I dislike, though, is that the show's romance is not really the kind of thing that I prefer. It's the kind that leads the audience on with the possibility that a brilliant romance will eventually blossom, but ultimately sticks to a generic status quo established in episode one. Not only that, but beyond the initial character quirks that get brought up with the intro of each new character, nothing much changes. By the end of the series, I don't feel like I know Sakura as a character any more than I did at the start. Sure, I can list off a number of experiences that I witnessed her have, but each of those experiences, to me, feel like they had no impact on her as a character, like nothing would have been different if they did not happen. And it's not just with Sakura either. Technically, there are three one-sided romances in this show between all the various different characters, and the main thing that I dislike about all of them is how easy it is for me to describe them as one-sided romances. Heck, in one case, it's not even a one-sided romance. It's more like the show just heavily hinting that feelings could be there between either parties. It just doesn't do anything with it. And you know, that's the whole vibe I get from the show, at least from the romance half of it. It's just pussyfooting around. Nozaki as a character is set up to be a ridiculously obvious romantic interest, and Sakura gets into this groove of never actually wanting to say the right words. Not that it would matter, because even if she did, it would probably get misconstrued in the name of comedy. Now, at this point, I could talk about the animation, but I'll be honest, there's not really anything to the animation that is particularly unique, or at least enough that deserves specific mention. It's not bad, because if it was, that would be something I could talk about. It's just decisively average. The only plus points being how they use special effects and various graphics to help along particular parts of the show's comedy. The designs of the characters, however, aren't quite detailed, at least more than I would have expected for this kind of series. The colors are bright without being garish or blinding, and the general figure for the characters resembles the roles that they are meant to play and are references for. 
with Nozaki being the tall prince, Sakura the childlike princess, and the various supporting characters being role models for the characters in Nozaki's manga, even if they are unaware of that fact, especially the gender-bent knowledge of it. Sure, it can dip into the realm of exaggerated facial expressions like all good comedy anime tend to do, but when it wants to, it can look good in a single frame. Is that a frame? No, that's a frame. Single frame. Yes. Now, I don't know if that's lampshading the fact that the show's about a manga author, but I did enjoy that particular thing about it. Now, at the time of this video, there is no dub yet. The show has been licensed by Sentai Filmworks, but Sentai Filmworks are not the kind of company that just automatically gives everything a dub. Like this show's romantic plotline, it's something that they're just going to be hemming and hawing about until they eventually actually, you know, release the discs. The Japanese dub, though, did add the right amount of merriment that this series requires. With performances that capture the nature of all the characters from the withdrawn oblivious, the head over heels in love, and even the I am going to choose so much goddamn scenery, it is not even funny. The high point of the show musically would be its surprisingly addictive opening song, making it one of the few openings from last season that I actually watched every single time, which makes it worth the mention. It has this level of catchy silliness to it that it just fits so well with what the show actually delivers on. The soundtrack itself was great too, and is one of the few things about the show that I feel lends itself to the show's romantic nature, even if the plot didn't. And that's kind of the thing. The feeling that I got from the show is that it tried to be a romantic comedy, but just honestly wanted to be pure comedy. The romantic elements, while they do exist, are sparse in anything beyond what could be considered a very small high school crush, and it's not the kind of thing that I personally generally look for in romance anime. It's actually the thing I decidedly avoid looking for, because I don't like that. I've seen too much of that. As for the comedy, I can say that the show delivers, and sometimes it delivers in spades, but at the same time, most of what it does has been done before and better. The reasons to watch this show are for its colorful characters, both in personality and art design, as well as the show's unique premise. I can give it that. It does have a unique premise, even if I feel like it's just scratching the surface as to the real life of a mangaka. I would have liked it a lot more if the romances just went somewhere, because when you establish a status quo in episode one and stay there, I feel like I am stalled. It just frustrates me. When I watch romances, I watch for the slow development that leads to hopefully a decent payoff, or at least I pray that it leads to a decent payoff. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, oh yes! Everybody's gonna put a gif of that and send it to me on Twitter and things like that. I don't care what's my next line. And so with all that in mind, I present Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun with the recommendation to skip it. In some cases, and depending on your sense of humor, that might be bumped up to a stream it, but that's as far as I would take it. It has humorous moments, it is good looking, and the intro is very catchy, but when I want to watch a rom-com, I hope for at least a decent romance element, and I did not find it here. And if all I wanted to do was show off some of the really hilarious scenes that the show has to offer, I would just show them off on their own, as they work rather well out of context, and don't require you to watch the entire show to enjoy them. At the time of this video, Monthly Goes Nozaki-kun, as I mentioned previously, has been licensed in North America by Sentai Filmworks, with a home video release forthcoming. Again, no idea if they ever plan to dub it, but it would probably be fine without one. That's just my personal opinion, though. For legal streaming, you can check out the show over on Crunchyroll if you happen to have access to it, of course. And while you don't need premium membership to actually watch the series, should you desire one, you can try out a free trial at crunchyroll.com slash glassreflection for all the anime awesomeness that it contains. For alternate anime recommendations, which is one of my favorite parts of this little bit of the scripts I write and things that I perform and things I get to show to you, I first point you towards one of my favorite romantic comedies Ever. His and her circumstances, also known as Kari Kano. I will admit it is not flawless, and it does suffer from production issues at various times, but it does exactly what I would hope for in a rom-com, and I am depressed that more shows have not attempted to follow more heavily in its footsteps. For the second recommendation, this one is going to be a blind recommendation, as I have not had the privilege of watching the series myself, and that is for Bakuman, a series that apparently focuses heavily, at least much more than here, on the art of making a manga. It has three seasons and has been constantly mentioned to me anytime I mentioned to someone that I was watching Nozaki-kun. So check it out, because I plan to eventually do so myself, and hopefully between that and Karakano, you should find something to your liking. And that's it for me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined, 
And hey, if you like what I do here and feel like helping out, please consider going and checking out my Patreon page. And if you feel it within your heart, also consider donating. I know I went under the camera for that, but I'm back. I was gone. And I'm back. I was gone. And I'm back. Hi. Very special thanks to Ryan McGandywar, Tyler Morris, James Champion, Alex Fitzpucci, and Walter Kelly for donating already! I don't know why I'm going so high! It really doesn't make sense! But you guys are all awesome, seriously. Thank you so, so much. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. Thank <laughs> you.